official licensed Warhammer product. That means it'll be painfully mediocre, but fun if you're into that. Which I am, so we're in luck. I don't know how the audio levels will be. In an age of lawlessness oh, that's good. and despair, the empire of man lay in ruins, torn asunder by civil war, and racked by famine and plague. Desperate, unscrupulous men deserted the temples of their fathers and gathered in forbidden cults, seeking the favor of the dark gods. And so it was, in the year 2301, that a Kurgan warlord named Asavar Kul united the savage tribes of the Chaos Wastes and made war upon the realms of men. The invaders entered the distant northern kingdom of Kislev and sacked its largest city, Prague. They sacrificed its people to their dark gods, and any who managed to flee were driven into the freezing wilderness. The Empire seemed powerless to stop the Chaos Horde, and many feared that the end of the world was at hand. But in the Empire's darkest hour, a nobleman from the south named Magnus rallied the people of the Empire to resist the invaders, uniting the warring Elector Counts in the process. The Imperial Army marched to the rescue of the Kislevite capital, fighting Kool's army in a massive battle outside the city walls. Joined by mighty heroes from all across the land, Magnus defeated Kool in single combat, and the Chaos Horde was scattered to the winds. Blessed by the gods, and heralded as the true emperor, Magnus returned to Nuln in triumph. But even as the old world celebrated Magnus's victory, the dark gods were planning their revenge. Hi, Striker. How you doing? We're doing the intro for the YouTube. I need to tweak some things. I'm sure the volume's not loud enough, and I don't know what... There's a big button thing. Okay, <clears throat> so this is set during the time of the... Uh, well, just after the time of the Three Emperors. It is fun. It's it's Diablo 3 for babies. I mean, like, it is hardcore baby Diablo mode. Erdenshire, God, I haven't seen you in a day. How you doing, buddy? I need to... Oh, no... I used my mouse, so now my controller won't work. That's a frustrating thing about this game. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're back. Good lord. Issues with the controllers. Because I want to play with the controller because I'm lazy. Um, so yeah, let me know if the audio gets weird. Sometimes the music gets really, really loud. Um, we're going to do a new hero. Hey, Billy. We're going to create a new hero. All the characters have their own individual opening. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm off on Sundays now, so hopefully I can start streaming at least a little bit on then. Uh, the Witch Hunter and the Dwarf Engineer were DLC. I got this on GOG, the whole thing, for like 20 bucks, which I think for full price it's like 80 or 100 bucks. It's kind of a mess, because it's not, it's not that good. Um, I've beaten the game as a High Elf Mage. I'm going to play that today, because I find it to be a lot of fun. Uh, of the other character stories, the Dwarf Engineer is hilarious, and we may look at that at some point. And the Wood Elf Scout has the best, like, artwork I've ever seen. Uh, of her just being jolly and not giving any fucks, as a Wood Elf do. So anyway, we're gonna be High Elf. Uh, I believe his name is Elon Tondir or something. Yeah, Elon Tier. It's, uh, Elvish for Bob. Uh, yeah, it's a lady. Uh, Elven magic is known to be among the most dangerous weapons in skilled hands, and Elontir wields it with rare dexterity. Adept at discharging torrents of pure magic into his enemies, he is able to combine his powerful spells to control his opponents, thus devastating their ranks with ease. See, this is what I mean about the music. It's ramping up, because chance. Settle down. So. Uh, this is, elves of I'll do the story in a bit. Of the winds of magic. So we the character story. More renowned than the high princes of Safri. You were born to a life of great power and privilege, destined one day to take your magic place among baby. the archmages at the Tower of Hoeth. 
The arts of magic came easily to you, but as your skill grew, so did your arrogance. A rivalry with another student at the tower spun out of control, culminating Smug in a magical asshole. duel that left your rival dead and one of your teachers crippled. As punishment for your reckless it kinda is, Billy. you were banished from Ulfwan until you had atoned for your crimes. Cast out with nothing but a few magical tomes and the clothes on your back, you journeyed to the old world in search of adventure. At first, the news of the chaos invasion meant little to you. Your people had been fighting the Dark Gods and their armies for thousands of years. But then you learned that Teclis, Hoth's greatest living archmage, had come to the old world to, to the land of incest and dung walls. Believing your moment of redemption was at hand, you rushed north to join the Imperial Army. Magnus accepted your offer at once, glad for another mage. We're gonna to make Daddy Teclis proud and he'll take us back. As the day of battle dawned, you were determined to prove your worth or die in the attempt. While Teclis shielded Magnus from the enemy's spells, you fought cool sorcerers and demons with all the skill at your command. By the time the battle was over, you were a hero. Magnus offered you a place in his retinue, a position of tremendous power and influence. Ooh. Such trifles meant nothing to you. All that mattered was the opinion of Teclis, who Senpai. could better exile with just a few words. And so you have chosen to travel to Nuln with the Imperial Army, determined to win the favor of the High Lawmaster at any cost. If that meant protecting Magnus from his enemies and rebuilding the ravaged human empire, then that is... I wish we could be a bright do. wizard, but I see why they did an Archmage, because just one element of magic would get old. And this lets us do everything. There's the... Back to the chant. Uh, but we get a character-specific story, and then we get the actual plot for the game. And I really like the, uh... I like the, the artwork and stuff. It's really it nice. It was an age of lawlessness and despair. A time of dark magic, treachery, and war. Morisleb has never been represented so well. It is a night made for witchery and evil deeds. And across the city, guardsmen clutch their weapons tightly and count the hours until the dawn. Sleep is hard to come by on a night such as this. The air is tense, and memories of the battle at Kislev leave you restless and on edge. Suddenly, a peal of thunder shatters the stillness, followed by a howling wind that shakes the tower to its foundations. Foul magic curdles the air, and screams echo in the courtyard outside. The tower is under attack! Oh no. There is sorcery in the air. I can feel it. I'd best get to the courtyard and see what's wrong. So, I was starting to say before I had all those issues with the controls, let's turn this damn music down. Um, this is kind of set around the time of the Three Emperors, uh, which was Magnus, and I want to say the Elector of Middenheim, and then a lady who wanted to be the Empire Emperor, but then everyone's like, ladies can't be emperors. Uh, and then Man, uh, Magnus united the Empire and fought back the Chaos Tide. It was, uh, probably the last great Chaos incursion before Archeon. So, it's a, it's an interesting time to be set in. <coughs> Cultists! They're a little loud, too. I'm gonna tweak Ungors. that. The Ungors! Is under attack. They're here for Magnus. I've got to stop them! So, uh, much like modern Diablo, I'm going to make many comparisons to that, because it is. Uh, the voice is fine, I guess. Um, we don't actually attack with our weapon, we just have skills. So you just attack with skills. This is our skill. We have infinite of potion, uh, but it's on a cooldown. And then uh, we equip skills and different bits of gear that affect our skills, and that's all very Diablo-like. Let me get all these tutorials out of the way. Um, there's also, as we level up, we can get points to get more stats and special abilities, which this is where you can really kind of tweak your build a lot. Um, we're going to go this tree, I think it is. Yeah, we're going to go on this one. And there's symbols, like it's the symbol of Safari, and that's just the symbol of Ulthwan, I think. They don't have names for some reason, I don't know why. But like some of the other ones are really neat, like the the Dwarven Slayer, one of his constellations is a big axe. 
uh, but you can have a bunch of passive skills. Um, because I have all the DLC, I have some special fan skills that don't take up slots, but give you a little extra boost, a little extra gold. Uh, oh, I can't do skills at the moment. I haven't learned skills yet. We, we must progress in the tutorial. <coughs> okay, so Ungors. Uh, there are no camera controls, which is incredibly jank, but such is life. I found the wizard to be the most fun to play as. There's a... Oh, we got we leveled up. We got a new skill. So, we... Oh, yeah, and don't forget to use potions. Potions. We have learned ball. Ball bounces. Ball is a good spell. There's something else we can do with ball that I will let the tutorial explain to us, because when I discovered it initially, I cackled like a madman. Still can't change those skills. Oh, it's because I'm in a I'm in a dangerous area. I have to get to a hub. Okay. <clears throat> so anyway, but uh, there are a lot of ranged enemies, and I just find the uh, the mage is the best for dealing with just every threat. Uh, I can see this being a lot of fun in multiplayer with like the difficulty cranked up, uh, so there's more spawns. Thanks, Sigma. You're here. There's Monsters everywhere. The tower's being overrun. Voice acting surprisingly good. I see that you fool. Where is Magnus? Upstairs in the throne room. There's armor in a chest by the stairs. Take whatever you need, but hurry. Hurry! Hey, Yara, how are you doing? Uh, well, the Troll Slayer gets the ability to throw axes like a machine gun, which is hilarious. Uh, and I know it would enrage Grimoth, so it might be worth showing off. Uh, and the other melee classes have their own thing, like the Witch Hunter has a pistol. The Archer is, of course, an archer. The Dwarf Engineer has, like flamethrowers and stuff for range. I'm not sure what the shield guy has for range. He has, like, charge attacks. It's going, Yaru. This is the first, like, really good day off I've had in a while, so I thought I'd stream for, hang out with you guys for a bit. So it auto-equips uh, anything we don't have a slot for, and after that we'll have to actually, like, explore. So you can see that they're doing certain things for me. This is also part of a set, the Safari Mage set. If I have all five pieces of it, I get energy regeneration, we um, ball takes energy. Energy comes back on its own, or if I use any skill with a triangle on it to hit an enemy. So that's how that's important. Or Angor's ball. Behold, ball. Multiple balls. We'll do Kikoskia proud and really sell just how great ball is. Oh, I'm out of power. You get a lot of energy back for whacking people, though. Which is good, because your rain, uh, the ranged attacks kind of struggle with elevation. There's not too much elevation in the game, though. Okay. Elantir's arch-type ability is Aether Manipulation. By tilting the right stick in the desired direction, he has the skill to control the position of various persistent spells, as shown by this symbol. Only the last spell cast can be controlled. So... And this is where the cackling began. Because that's bullshit. That's <laughs> so good. It's so fast. Anyway, cutscene. As you reach the throne room, the air seethes with foul magics. A chaos source Not foul magics! And Max, the savior of the empire, is caught within the spell. Oh no! Shouting a challenge, you prepared your counter spells. Be gone, thought! By the time you regain the, ah, the story's great. The battle is over. The sorceress is gone. Leaving also, what does the empire have? An angry the Puritans. Angry men fill the throne room. But these are not gods. They are witch hunters. The Empire's feared inquisitors, led by none other than the infamous Heinrich, Heinrich Voss. Are under arrest for the murder of Emperor Magnus. Voss declares he's not dead. The sorceress, but Voss refuses to listen. I see no sorceress here. He shouts, "Only you and a room full of dead men." I mean, he's not wrong. Confess your crimes, elf. Voss threatens. We will have the truth from you one way or another. After a week in the dungeons, you'll tell me everything I want to know. But before the witch hunter could make good on his threat, a commanding Yeah, I don't do green magic. It was clearly a goblin. Oh, Daddy's here. 
Senpai! Elvish for daddy. Technus examines Magnus in silence. He lives thanks to gods, the High Elf says at last. But he is in the grip of a powerful curse. It is only a matter of time before he succumbs. No one outside this room must know what happened here. If the people learn that Magnus has fallen, then everything he fought for will have been for nothing. The fate of the Empire lies in our hands. We must find this sorceress and end the curse before it's too late. If Magnus dies, the Empire dies with him. That would be a true statement at this point in time, since he just united the Empire uh, from its warring elector states. <laughs> That's a callback, Billy. So, um... Oh yeah, the only thing... Uh, it's a shame this game didn't do better, because while it is not as good as Diablo 3 or 2, not a lot of things are going to be. Uh, and it's fine. It's serviceable, it's fun, it's a little repetitive, the level design's kind of... Eh, there's no Skaven. And there probably never will be. Uh, they did a Tomb Kings expansion, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then they did another expansion, which was kind of dumb. It's just more of the same bad guys. We're going to fight in the first chapter here. Anyway, so now we're in Hub, which is... The sole purpose of the Hub is to talk to your quest giver. That's all there is. There are dark yeah, Grim Dawn's still awesome. Forces <laughs> at work I guess they're still updating that. It got a patch the other day. find the sorceress and defeat her, we must confront the dark cult that has taken root in Nuln and expose its secret master. This voice is like butter. Command me, High Lore Master. I will show these humans the might of Azure. Your courage does you credit, young prince. But do not underestimate your foes. They are more treacherous than you can imagine. The attack on the tower came from the sewers that stretch beneath the city. <laughs> So long as the enemy controls the tunnels surrounding the tower, our position here is vulnerable. It doesn't have the pizzazz. Hey, Grimith. No, no, uh, Teclis is full-on senpai in this, Grimith. We need to impress him so he'll let us go back home because we killed some people accidentally, and then they kicked us out of Hoeth Your first for being a shit. Task is simple. Enter the tunnels and drive the cultists back Just from in the time. tower. Kill everything in your path. This is how we impress Teclis. Kill everything in your path. Foul things <laughs> await you in the darkness. Teclis, the war mage. Uh, we're going to save Magnus, the uh, technically still living emperor. Okay, so this is the hub. There's nothing in it. That's kind of a bummer. There's like no shops or anything like that. Oh yeah, I can do my, my my fan skills. Gold is for respawning. I think that's it. I never found anything else to do with it. Slightly better loot. More fragments. Fragments are for a thing I may or may not do. Divine fragments are character specific fragments. Link fragments make those work better. I have no idea how to play the special emote, so I'm not going to worry about it. That one looks interesting, though. And we can have a birdie. We can have a red birdie or a blue birdie. I'm open to suggestions. It increases our loot radius. I'm going to go with a blue birdie for now. Okay, so we get all those for free. And then we have our stats. Those are all my, my sh shards. That's what they were talking about. You use them to power up your weapons. Uh, it is not worth doing at this time. Uh, but, like, for example, if I put a bunch of damage gems into it, Note, the, I have the low, least amount of damage gems. And an elf gem, I get an extra... 15 times damage? It's kind of busted. We technically don't learn that ability until Chapter 3, so we'll see how it goes. That's true. This is pre-College of Magic, even, Grimoth. This is uh, just before it, actually. But uh, we got banished to the old world, and then we figured, realized Teclis was here helping the humans, and we're like, well, fuck the humans, but that's what Teclis is doing. I need him to be happy with me. You're telling me, lady. 
But yeah, there's there's people, and then there's doors to different levels, uh, in a semblance of providing some sort of overworld. But that's it. There's a guy up near where we started that we can sell our gear to for gold, and that will also unlock... Oh yeah, that actually unlocks skills. I might have some that are worth using. Turn that off. Um, you can have a number of skills equal to your points available. Let's see, these are the uh, DLC-related skills. They do, they're just not formally trained. Uh, lucky Charms, good, and free. Uh, give us some better loot. What else can we do? Tombs of Knowledge, a bonus experience? Hell yeah, why not? Uh, gold, I don't care. Health, I don't care. Damage, minus 5%, no thanks. Movement speed sounds fine. We can do some of that. And we should have a god point. God point. Oop. Used our god. Oh no, we undid it. You can freely do and undo these as you uh, as you wish, which is awesome. You can also just find a place you want to go to and keep clicking towards it, and it'll take the shortest path. Some of the nodes give you damage. Uh, there seems to be offensive ones and then defensive ones, and then there's like energy management ones. Uh, the offensive ones so far have been best. Uh, invasions and expeditions are bonus levels. It's post-game, basically, because there isn't really a post-game. You can't do New Game Plus, like in uh, uh, D3. Uh, but you can do an expedition, which is basically the same thing, because it's just a map full of bad guys. Okay, yep, energy, we talked about that earlier. We got a Mage Staff! Another nice thing is you can take any uh, any item you've given to the Collector's Guild and you can change your gear to look like it. So I could have the Phoenix Herald, <laughs> which is apparently a staff I threw away on my main. Or the Kaldor Loremaster Scepter. We won't be doing that, that's silly. Anyway, I hear scrabbly things. Nerglings! You don't even know. Oh, never mind the staves. The hats are where it's at, Grimoth. So ball is fun. Ball is good for traveling and killing things while you move around. It's a very swarmy kind of game. Uh, there's... Eventually we'll have a little bit of AoE. Um, one thing this does, which is kind of neat, is it has a Rage of the Gods mode. We pick up red orbs, they give us life, and they give us Rage of the Gods, or whatever the hell they call it. It's Rage of the Gods. Uh, and then we can activate that, and it gives us a new set of skills that are bullshit, and drop a lot more of the valuable shards. Well, yeah, that's why, like I said, I enjoy the wizard a lot more because the levels are boring and it's nice to be able to keep moving through them. Not all the levels are boring. Um, I really like the next chapter's levels, and I love the fourth chapter's levels. It's fantastic. And that's one of the reasons I was like, you know what, this is kind of a dry game, but we'll show it off. Uh, we have gained the ability to blink, which is the other reason to play the wizard, because fuck obstacles. Uh, walking is for poor people. I am in a sewer. Yes, we are hunting a cult. Uh, Magnus was paralyzed by a Chaos Sorceress, and everyone knows Chaos Cultists live in the sewers. Yeah, early on the Troll Slayer is a bit shit. All the characters are. Uh, the Archer is kind of meh. Her first skill is really good, though. Her first skill is probably the best skill she ever gets. Uh, I haven't gotten super far with her, though. The Witch Hunter's fun. His right stick is he changes from melee to pistol, and <laughs> he has a really fun move where he just spins around in circles shooting his pistol. <laughs> um, the, R, the Wood Elves R stick is she just dodges, which is a bit shit. Uh, the Slayer has a chain hook that he throws around, he scorpions himself around everywhere. Or uh, a hookshot, hookshot is probably more accurate. Um, the Dwarf Engineer has a little steam gun that fires when as, as she builds up a, a charge. 
I mean, he's he, he makes dwarf noises. What more could you want? Uh, sure. I don't really care what they do at this point. I just want bigger numbers. Damage is probably what I want the most of. Well, let's actually go with you. More offensive. We want damage over time and raw damage. Excuse me. Getting some crits. See, they're already dying so much faster. There was another box over here somewhere. Excuse me. Have ball. Ah, oh, there's the box. It's over there. Pardon. Missed the stairs. <laughs> Unfortunate. Nice thing is if you uh, bind your skills properly, like I really should. Um, let's put you there. Then I can shoot and move the ball. <laughs> You can also let go of the ball and pick it back up. It's very nice. A golden diadem. Lovely. And a better sort of oh, Kaldor sword. I like the Kaldor gear. It's covered in dragon stuff. Barrels sometimes have gear in them. They typically are just full of gold, which doesn't matter. Nope. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's a money skill right there. That's where we're going to be spending our energy. Ha! A pox on your stairs. For I am an elf and give no fucks. Also, you can use it to kind of blink around the hub's world. Nice. Uh, at later levels, it'll do damage. You can see how much how your skills are doing. You can practice with ball. I wonder. I have a stash. Surely I can't equip that. Surely not. I mean, it's a level 50 staff. No, okay. Okay, good. I wasn't using it on my main character. I didn't want to accidentally throw it away, because it is nice. Oh, my internet died, didn't it? God damn it. Or we could just be back now. Yay, spotty internet connection. Thanks, Xfinity. Glad I'm giving you 70 bucks a month. Honestly, I think it's my modem. <clears throat> Aw, thanks, Grimeth. Billy. Uh, I think it's my modem, uh, but I need my truck to be working so I can drive to Xfinity, because I'm not going to make anyone else sit through that crap. So here's, uh, they're going to send us here later eventually, but we can do uh, a lot of the other post-game stuff here. Uh, boss fights, uh, Tower of Chaos is like a loot thing. This one's kind of cool. Um, well, it was in pieces the other day, Billy. Um, I had a massive uh, head gasket failure, and I've been having a guy's... A friend of a friend has been rebuilding it from scratch, and uh, he's got it together, and he test drove it today, and it's making bad noises, so, and it wasn't acting the way it should, so he's uh, doing a little bit more with it. <clears throat> hopefully, hopefully, another day or two. Okay, so we, I didn't do anything else uh, when I realized we were dead, so we just beat that first quest. We report back to Senpai. The tunnels, High Lord Master, and driven them deeper into the sewers. The tower is safe, 
but I sense our enemies gathering in even greater numbers deep within the earth. I do not doubt it. The servants of Nurgle flourish in darkness and filth. Well, I appreciate it, Lizzie. Our battle against the cult has only just begun. Yeah, but it's the 2007, Billy. You handled the situation well, young prince. Return to me when you are ready for your next task. I, uh... Didn't want to buy a new used car and have to learn whatever problems it has, because the only problem this had was the, uh... was the gasket. And then he just... He took uh, the engine apart, cleaned all the pieces, put it back together. I don't think there were any pieces left over. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but that's where we're at, is just kind of troubleshooting the, the rebuild, so to speak. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yes, no, uh, he is very much an asshole, Grimoth. Actually, real quick, um, since we're in between quests, I do want to show off another character. Um, just her opening cutscene, because it's delightful. Um... We'll show off the other elf, because she has the greatest... Okay, so there's a song called I'm So Fresh You Can Suck My Nuts. And it has great meme potential. And she is the living embodiment of being so fresh you can suck her nuts. See if you can point out exactly what frame I'm talking of, of her story. <clears throat> the uh, Both the dwarf stories are hilariously tragic. The life of a wood elf is one of tireless service. There's no land boats in this either, so she's already better than Dragon Age. Sometimes, however, it happens that a young Azrai is born with an urge to wander. An overpowering curiosity and a desire for adventure that will not be denied. Known as the Windborn, these wood elves can be vexing to their elders, but have the potential to become great rangers if their adventurous nature is properly harnessed. And so young there it is can leave to wander the wide world for a short period of time no more than a hundred years to see all they can the wider world <laughs> I just love that fact. <laughs> right you see it right Grimmith <laughs> fuck you guys I'm out of here <laughs> squares the old world for little more than a year when you heard the news immediately head straight for the human junk a human named Magnus was raising an army to drive back the horde sounded like an epic adventure. The very thing you'd left the Athel Lauren to find. Oh, just wait, Grimm. It gets better. And so you crossed the depths of the Great Brightfall to find the Imperial Army. I love this art style. Like, all the cutscenes are great. <laughs> it's a shame there's not very many. The army and made your way to Magnus's tent, I see. you offered your services as a scout. Impressed oh, you mean them. Skill, ah. Magnus accepted and Silly. Made you a part of his growing retinue. I could shank you if I wanted. How about you join me? Thus began your first great adventure, guiding the growing human army across well, you're the a, empire. You're and a hunky boy, so sure. Hey, Cloud. The great battle outside the walls of Kislev was more terrible than you could have imagined. You kept close to Magnus during the fight and joined him in the heroic charge that slew the Chaos Lord and turned the tide of the battle. Oh no! Wait for After it. The battle was won and the dead put to rest. You returned with Magnus to the city of Nome, where a hero's welcome awaited you. I don't want to be a hero. I'm an elf. And the urge to wander has taken hold again. As the sun sets over Nome, you wonder if the time has come to leave the city and seek a new adventure elsewhere. I love the thing is it twice. It's so good. Fuck it, I'm gonna show off the dwarves. It was an age of I'm gonna show I'm gonna show off the dwarves, cause Because they're both Okay, so like dwarves are the ultimate in Schadenfreude. Cause they're just so depressing. So and the one is a slayer, so of course it's bad. You don't there's no happy beginnings for slayers. And he looks awesome. As a young dwarf in the great city of Karaza Karak, you were taught the legends of your ancestors. 
Ever since, you have longed for the day when you could win fame and glory of your own and restore the luster of your much-diminished clan. When High King Thorgrim Grudgebearer called for warriors to aid Kislev during the Great Chaos Invasion, you were one of the first to pledge your service. Along with your father and your younger brothers, you left Karaza Karak behind, marching eagerly to war. It wasn't long before you were in the thick of the fight, trapped inside the city of Kislev. You and your kin fought fiercely against the Chaos Horde. When cool so metal. breached the city gates, it was the dwarfs who led the counterattack that drove the enemy back and saved the day. Your fearlessness in battle earned you the name Axebiter, and the Kislevites hailed you as a hero. But the more you tasted of glory, the more you began to crave it. When Magnus's army arrived, you became a cocky city, shit. Your thirst for immortal fame ended in tragedy. Leading a force How bad could it be? Force, you tried to fight your way out of the city to join the Imperials and fight Cool's army together. It was a deed worthy of legend, but not even Grimnir himself could have fought his way through so vast a horde. Your reckless charge was driven back at a bitter cost. Half of the valiant dwarfs that had followed you were slain, including your father and all of your brothers. Racked with guilt over the deaths of your kin, you swore powerful oaths of vengeance against the Dark Powers. And so you chose the path of the Slayer, seeking redemption through a glorious death in battle. When the final battle outside the city walls began, you went forth alone to find Asavar Kuhl and challenge him to single combat. <laughs> He's still pretty mad. You carved a bloody path through the enemy, reaching the Chaos Lord in time to see him fall to Magnus and his knights. Dar works so good. You accepted an invitation from Magnus to join his retinue and return. Ah, uh, they die at red. As far as you symbolism. The new emperor owed you a glorious death, and with many of Asavar Kul's champions still alive, you could be sure Magnus would not lack for foes. So that's the Slayer. His is pretty metal. But it's like, you you were stupid and got your entire family killed. And, and I, I can show off his hookshot real quick. There's no cooldown. It also damages and slightly stuns enemies. It doesn't damage them a lot, mind you. Uh, and you can go down, like, like if there was uh, there's that bit in the first stage where you can jump the stairs, basically. You can go down them, but you can't climb that way. Kind of a bummer. I gotta show off the last dwarf, because it's probably the funniest facial reaction of any of the characters. Although, admittedly, I haven't watched the humans' openings, because they're because humans are boring. I need to lead somebody. Bye, Braggy. <coughs> Gila! The engineer. Yeah, the wood elf is, is the top tier, with the She's so fresh. Not all dwarves are delvers in the earth or master smiths. A rare few become engineers, creating wondrous machines. You know, steel, the crazy ones. Stone. You have wanted to be an engineer ever since you were a young dwarf, growing up in your father's workshop at Karaza Karak. Your father, Gunnar Torkelson, was one of the greatest engineers of his generation. And being his only child, he taught you everything he knew. In time, you helped him design and build some of his greatest feats of engineering. Wait for it. But the life of an engineer was not without risk. Harnessing the power of fire and steam demanded precise craftsmanship and the finest materials. Balls of brass. Any error, no matter how slight, could lead to disaster. There was no way to know for certain what had caused the explosion. It could have been any of a thousand things. But what a fucking origin! Until <laughs> your father would recover, his days as an end. And then they did the cop out. Over. Tormented by shame, you left Karaza Karak to seek your fortunes in the old world. She didn't say which shames. Like, is she ashamed of herself or her father or? Craftsmanship in all its forms. So you traveled to Null, 
in hopes of offering her hammers need to the Empire's famous gunnery school. You arrived in Nuln to find the Imperial throne vacant and the Empire in tatters, following a succession of pretenders and centuries of civil war. The gunnery school was but a shadow of its former glory, but the remaining engineers gladly welcomed you into their ranks. Your work at the gunnery school had barely begun when news of the chaos invasion reached the city. See, that's a nice way to think of it, Yaru, but old world Warhammer dwarves are pretty, uh, pretty stupid. She could have been ashamed of her father for failing. I mean, they, they wiped out a city over ten pieces of silver once. Again and again. Until Magnus and his knights <laughs> defeated. Look at her go! You return to know she has a little machine gun. <laughs> lauded by the humans for your courage and skill. Yeah, it's in the. Uh, I think it was in the Dwarf Codex. You were surprised Fourth or fifth edition. An invitation to join his I'll try and find it sometime. Oh, it was like ten pieces of silver, like a hundred years ago. And the humans are like, what? Why would we... What? No, that's stupid. Why would we still care about that? And then they all died. Um, I can't use her ability unless I... Well, I guess... Yeah, auto-attacking builds up uh, a charge, and then you go... And you shoot little steams. Yeah, it was a good Ono oh face. It's a good Ono oh face. Like, suddenly... Um, that one reminds me a bit of... Uh, can't get my, uh, hey Blade, this is Warhammer Chaos Bane. Um, what was it? George Carlin once did a bit about spicing up baseball by putting, uh, live landmines out in the outfields. I ah, settling under that pop fly and pff, holy shit. Just the, the kind of face he made for that was, a uh, very appropriate. So here's, here's Bob. Back to Magnus's Curse. Yep. Well, that's why they also look down on engineers. Like, they're already shunned. Because why do you need a gun? Crossbows exist. And they work just fine. That gun's gonna blow up in your face. Just you wait and see. You'll shoot your eye out. There is Hi, Daddy. News from the tower. Voss has learned that a large group of Magnus's guardsmen have gone missing. He believes they might have pursued the cultists into the sewers during the attack. Why would you do such a foolish thing? No doubt they have lost their way in the maze of tunnels. Blind, stumbling fools. Someone needs to find them and try to get them out. If the cultists haven't trapped them yet, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, Teclis is our patron. Teclis is going to get us back into Ulthuan. We just have to keep fondling it. We just have to keep kissing that booty. No. Tecla sounds really good. All the voice acting is pretty good in this. Like I said, there's there's money in this game, but then like there's the inability to move the camera. It, it's it's so it's one of those games that I I tend to like where it's like it's so close to being great, but sadly it is only good. Oh yeah, we gotta we gotta <laughs> yeah. Hey Tecla, let's see what I can do with my ball. Just think what I can do for you, buddy. Main quest. I'll think about it, game. I could show off Invasion real quick. Maps aren't very big. This is a cool map. They don't use this one very often. Let's see what you can see. The bad guys are tougher now. They have more hit points. This is also a pretty good area to just fire a ball and let it go because of all the narrow ricochets. There's also a lot of archers, so this level sucks for the melee guys because they don't have any way to deal with them yet. Okay, you guys you guys all ready? Nice and bunched up for daddy? Whoosh! Oh, that's good. That's good. 
My spells need more yeah, we like power. that. Hey, Perot. It's okay, Perot. It's nowhere near as good. Well, I don't say it's nowhere near as good. It's not as good as Diablo 3. Uh, it is more of that... It's more of a torchlight Diablo 3 than it is like a Diablo 2 Grim Dawn. And it's not bad. The story's okay. The voice acting's pretty good. And uh, the level design is a bit shit. Uh, we haven't noticed it yet, but all the levels, uh, especially in the later chapters, are just reused asset flips. Which is kind of a bummer. Okay, so I'm going to round all these guys up. Because this is a big old field of dicks. And then they can have ball. A lot of damage over time with Fire Breath, which is kind of nice. And then we can finish, we can polish off the losers. We almost have level 2 Rage. Okay, cool. Uh, you get an ability for each level of Rage. That is better. Ooh, that's got good defense. Didn't mean to do that. That's all right, though. Won't hurt anything. Excuse me. It's okay, Kibitz. I enjoy it. Uh, it's really easy, and there's not a lot to do in the endgame except farm for loot to farm for harder versions of the endgame. I didn't... Which, I, I know Diablo is the same way, but... I just didn't like it as much as I liked Diablo 3's uh, post-game. But I love certain elements of the story, and uh, I like the bad guys, so I think it's worth sharing. And that's where we're at. And also I love the wizard, because he's bullshit. He's one of the best examples of bullshit, overly powered magic stuff I've seen. Um, stuff. Got some new pants. Oh, I need to equip that passive. Silly boy. Uh, we got concentration. Our energy regeneration is increased while static. We'll get a lot of abilities as like, hey, while you're not moving, X happens. Which, the High Elf doesn't move very much. His walking's for poor people. You don't even need to leave Fire Breath on for very long because of the dot effect. Ah, that's one of my favorites. Because you can do both at roughly the same time. Because these are free spells that generate mana. Um, so we learned Arcane Hail. Uh, so it does magic damage. And Ashki Missile does fire damage. And then we'll get... Ultimately, we'll get Flaming Lightning and... Uh, Ashki Missile's power-up is really dumb. But it does decent damage, and it slows, which is good against, like, solo targets. A little hard to aim. Are we maxed? I think we're maxed. I think we'll have to pop this. So this is Rage of the Gods for me. I just hold the B button down. Um, I also have the, the teleport that does that, but it's on a cooldown. And then I have this for my basic spell. But I like this one. I like the uh, I like the Blender Mage better. Rage of the Gods, Grimoth. Rage of the Gods. Just like uh, God of War. No, he just got really angry. Um, I like the Wood Elves version of that is f by far the best in the game. Uh, it, she has a cone shot, you know, a spread shot, because she's an archer, so of course she does. Um, and it just turns into flaming, like, nuclear missiles. It's so bullshit, and it's the first skill you get.
Well, it's just red, so that I know that it's it's to do with my dark balls. Nerglings! Oh yeah, we got new pants a while ago. Yeah, they're fine. I haven't got any new rings. I do like the persistent corpses, too. Hmm? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't. He's. This is just the first one, see? We will fight all of the big bads. Blinding light. Oh, that's. Didn't get a slot for some reason. Blinding light is. okay. It's a wide range damaging stun. Doesn't use any damage or mana though, since it's not a cooldown. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer that this doesn't have Skaven in it. It has Tomb Kings uh, once we beat the main main campaign, but. There's no escape from ball. Oh, right, I didn't save up long enough to get the uh, other one. Uh, I need to find more dudes. Uh, using your rage ability makes enemies more likely to drop fragments, which are good because they make you stronger if you use them. We could use some for funsies. Uh, ooh, I have a better sword. Yeah, we'll put him in this. This is what a level four sword. Let's let's go full bullshit damage. Um, the you can use different types and then link them together to get different effects. I find raw damage to be fine though. So this sword did give me forty-one damage. Uh, now it gives me... Now it gives me 375. And there should be another chest over here. Oh, ambient noises. I just, I, I know, I, I just hit it once, ass. Yeah, nids are kind of a one-trick riding tool. Better armor? Better armor. Nah. Oh, I just got my second ring, it's not actually any good. I like Fire Warrior. Fire Warrior is a uh, janky and fun. Okay, that's insane. Oh, bastards. Into a trap. Try to fight, but too many of them. Save your breath, human. I'm here to take you back to the tower. They took them. Anyone still able to walk? Dragged them, screaming. <laughs> Shut up, human. Forget about me. Find the others. Okay. Rotten little nurgling bastard. Oh no, I am trapped. Whoosh. I bring it a foosh. 
Maybe they're up here. No, it's the end of the sewers. It's a good level, though. Go talk to Teclas, let him know we fucked up. Something must be driving the rats out of the sewers. Well, yeah, hi, mage. Buy my cereal. I should wait some more. I found the lost soldiers, High Lore Master, but it was too late. They had blundered into an ambush, and most had been killed. The cultists took the rest. The men were alive when they were taken. So I was told. What will the cult do with the prisoners? Not prisoner. Sacrifices. Offerings to the Lord of Pestilence in exchange for more power. Oh no. We must do everything we can to prevent this. Go and make whatever preparations you require. Then return to me as soon as you are ready. I know, just giant elf statues. <laughs> Everything short of going myself. Well, it's like, I don't know what he expects me to do. There are no shops. Uh, well, I mean, there's a shop, but all I can do is throw stuff away at it. Uh, I guess we can look at the God Skill tree. We want Arcane Manifestation 3. Really, we want Living Magic. Uh, living magic is one of my favorite skills because any enemy killed by a fire or magic spell, the two types of spells we know, has a chance to create a persistent fiery or magical projectile. So basically a living damaging pet uh, for fireball. A pet fireball that follows you around. And then you have arcane manifestation, which just summons a shitload of them, which we have now. And we have a point left. Let's head from living magic three. Okay. This is also going to make our, our damage. And, uh, are we on the health tree now? I think we're on health and cooldown now. Health and cooldown's not bad, though. Oh, it's uh, there's some good ones. Uh, let's see. That's an energy regeneration one. Spiritual Prison is uh, kind of neat, actually. I can show that off real quick. Because it's neat that it's free to respec, so you can just show stuff off. I don't like this skill. I would rather use this. Spiritual Prison. Yeah, and everything inside that uh, is slowed. Which is kind of nice. Uh, and then that's Arcane Manifestation. <laughs> it's so broken. Um... Let's see, this is killing a champion gives you more damage. Damage increase based on counterattack damage, basically thorns. Uh, what else do we have? Energy back, energy regeneration. Using a skill with a cooldown has a chance to heal 10%. That seems kind of useless. Um, we have a oh, arcane storm is good for bosses because they're big and slow. It's just it doesn't travel with you though. The fireflies travel with you, which is amazing. And damage taken is reduced while static. And level 3 of Fortress of Willpower gives your damage plus 15 while you're not moving. Uh, which is great. Maximum energy of all players, the multiplayer thing. This is like a time bomb you can set down that does the most damage I've seen of any skill in the game. Uh, these are just hubs that give you like bonus uh, stats. Burning enemies take more magical damage, which is pretty great. I do like that one. Uh, what's that one? Contributing to the death of a champion gives you a cooldown bonus. Meh. Energy costs and cooldowns are increased. Damage taken is reduced. Meh. What's level 3 look like, though? 25 less damage. No, 15 less damage. I mean, so if you combine that with the static thing, that'd be 30 less damage. That's that's pretty substantial. Um, anyway, though, let's go back to where we were headed for living magic. And the game is well and truly broken now. Okay, so Teclas wants us to learn about this guy. Now we can go find Teclas. Teclas is now in an irritating location. He is upstairs, which are hard to teleport onto.
Oh yeah, also, that's uh, a neat little... Can't tell what banner is. Looks like Midnight, though. And then... That's... Oh, that kind of looks like a vampire, but it's clearly a chaos guy. Yeah. Neat. It's all level... And <laughs> the flags always drop down into frame. It's, uh... <laughs> it's amusing. Everyone's praying for Magnus. There is no time to waste. Even as we speak, the cultists could be preparing to sacrifice their captives. We cannot let them succeed. Consider it done, High Lord Master. You may count on me. The enemy will do everything in their power to keep you from reaching the captives. In oh no! Time. Choose your battles wisely, young prince, and make haste. Don't like stop to kill every living thing in your path. Ah, wizard. Because walking is for what, everybody? Yes, that's right. Poor people. Sigmar didn't look like a friar guy. Sigmar looked like a big raging barbarian. He looked like the barbarian from Warhammer Quest. I'm not sure why they decided the priests should look all fussy like normal priests. They should look like all Ulrich guys. There you go, Kibitz. Kibitz has the right idea. Okay, save prisoners. We have a time limit. Also, we have this. You saved my life. Maybe one day I'll do the same for you. Unlikely. Let me just pick up some rage. It only lasts for like 15 seconds. Ah, Plague Bear. Plague Bears are durable and slow. Okay, so we have unlocked our first improved skill. It is one of the best uh, for this character. So we have cast a projectile that creates a fire explosion on impact. Okay. Cast a projectile that creates a fire explosion on impact, burning enemies and setting the ground on fire. It has a pretty good AoE, too. And, like, all this is they take damage for walking on it. Which is nice. It's good stuff. Hey guys, guess what? <laughs> Did you know about my big old brain? Also, you can teleport with them and they'll follow you. Come back here, you. What the fuck? Is that... Is he trapped? Can you... Are you okay? Oh, he broke his way out. He broke free. Ooh, fancy diamond. I still have... No, that's a level 7 shirt. Okay. I thought I hadn't gotten a new shirt yet. Uh, health and energy, why not? A shot a blue ring. Hmm, that's not as good as what I currently have. I guess it's fine defense wise. Defense not super important anymore. Not super important anymore. Look at all this nergly crap. Actually, I might have the Shadow Crown of Nargyth. Um, 
I'm not sure which one would be Nargyth. It'd be the one before Krace. So probably Belcaratus? I'm just saying, no. I do have a Kaldor Loremaster Helm. <laughs> That's the Nargyth Helm. It's kind of meh. Kaldor is where it's at. Dragon themology. Now we have Flaming Ball. Die faster, guys. Come on. You're holding up progress. Um, speaking of, we want Flaming Ball. Flaming Ball is very good. There's a bunch of guys to save over there. Look at this bullshit. It also leaves damage floor. Chaos spawn. Um, I got I put some more damage on my weapon, which makes your damage for everything go up. There's not really a specific spell or whatever damage. Oh yeah, dudes. Foosh. Mainly, I'm just getting better skills. Uh, that's what really makes you stronger, is combining your skills in good ways. Like, eventually I'll get the ability to do that whole things that are on fire take 30% more damage. Uh, or I can also have every time I hit someone with a magic spell, my fire spells do 30% more damage. And every time I hit someone with a fire spell, my magic spells do 30% more damage. Which is incredibly broken. The enemies are well and truly fucked, that's for sure. Chaos spawns are bad and probably can kill me. I mean, they'd have to hit me first. That's a new stick. Ooh, it's a nice stick. Treasure? Let's see treasure. It's a pretty generous time limit for this mission. The last, uh, those last three guys were really close together, and the last, last three guys are pretty close together. Okay, that's enough of you. Kill some dudes for XP. Get him, Fireflies! I won't. You damn well better not. Excuse me. Okay. We got a new passive. Is it worth using? Consuming energy heals all players. So basically using fire breath heals me. So now I truly am unkillable. Oh hey, how you, you doing? Saved... Should've gotten the chest first, just for the lulls. Okay, one guy left. Oh, you guys have real bad timing. I just got my got my skill back. <laughs> but yeah, with this and then traveling with ball, you just kind of clear the levels. And then lightning's pretty great as things come on the screen. How you doing? Oh, you poor, weak, pathetic humans. Don't worry, I'll save you. Where are you going? Stop that. Oh, I thought that blue stuff was more loot. Unfortunately not. 
Uh, I think you're right. Uh, Z, because our cash is fire. Um, yeah, or Akshi, Akshi. We did it. We saved everybody. I can have a red phoenix too. Everyone gets a little pet. The uh, Slayer gets uh, an ancestral spirit, which is kind of funny because it's just like, oh no, your dead brother's following you. Um, I forget what the en I don't think I looked at the engineers. The uh, Wood Elf gets a little fairy dragon, and I don't think I looked at either of the humans. Okay. Yeah. Nope. It's hard to get on the stairs. <laughs> Banners. The captives have been freed, just as I said they would. Not a single human was sacrificed. You have done well. The Chaos Gods withhold their gifts from those who fail them. This will weaken their cult and increase our chances for victory. Now is the time to press our advantage. Return to me as soon as you are ready, and I will have a new task for you. Hang on, let me pull my character sheet out. God damn it, Teclas, why do you keep moving around? Oh, that's a nice amulet. Damage over time. Ooh, Kaldor Archmage Staff. Eh, I guess the defense bonus is decent. Boots. Magic Trousers. Sign me the hell up. Be a while before we get a better sword. Due to my shenanigans. Huh. We had two more Crace pieces. What do we need? Uh, pants? No. Grace boots. Would that be worth? Oh no, Grace mage. Yeah, they're different levels. There's mage and archmage. Eh, it's not worth dealing with. I just, I just, I just wear whatever is, gives me the best stats. Oh yeah, uh, god stuff. Um, don't quite have living magic. Sell some stuff. <laughs> yeah, I can put damage on my pants. It gets pretty stupid. Since the attack, we have been on the defensive, reacting to the enemy's plans. That ends now. We must seek out and destroy the cult's source of power. If we are to end its reign of terror here in Nuln. Of course, High Lord Master. But how shall we find it? The cult must have camps scattered throughout the sewers. Find one and capture its leader. He will tell us what we need to know. Sure. Um, there are gems for... What is it? Damage, health, armor... I forget what yellow is. Uh, oh, critical damage. Yeah, percent percent chance or no percentage of critical damage. Uh, and then that's health and armor. And then if you like combine them, like if I did damage and armor and combined it, I would get armor piercing, but like a fraction of a percent. Uh, and if you do something like this. You also get a random buff to one of your skills. So it's really designed for like equipping your final, your forever gear, like your endgame stuff. But if you just want to progress through the game a little faster, it's nice to just throw a couple hundred points of damage on something. Makes grinding through the bad guys a little faster. Okay, so find a chaos camp. Oh god, look at all this. We'll just pop this early, I think. Paul, oh, you went the wrong way. Hmm. 
You know, the fire blasts are great for, like, the, the rat and nurgling chaff. Oh, that's a mini-boss. Herald. So we have better step between worlds. I don't think it's worth using. What does it do? It does teleport a short distance and create a magical explosion when you reappear. reappear. Oh, absolutely, Billy. Uh, those are some of my favorite games. Nice tentacle. You fuck. <laughs> yeah, no shit, Z. They won't be totally busted at all. Who's going to be the whipping boy, though? Is it going to be the Chaos Dwarves or Kislev? I think Kislev's going to be the whipping boy for the first season. Well, that or they'll do the Chaos thing where it's impossible to get the other deities to work with you. Uh, Kislev has Ice Magic, Bear Cavalry, State Troops, uh, Winged Hussars. Uh, they're basically Poland. Blade Wizard! Ba ba ba! A beastman shaman. That was glorious. Hey, where are you going? Uh, Kislev used to have, well, they, there were supplemental units you could use in, like, an Empire army. Like, you could have some, you could have winged Hussars, basically. Or winged Lancers, I think is what they called them, because they couldn't, or just decided not to do Hussars. Um, just High Elf Sword. <laughs> um, ooh, wow. Rare Trousers. Uh, I forget what else they have, really. That and the Ice Wizard, and... Uh, Beastman Shaman. So these are the uh, champions that you... You can get skills that buff you if you beat them. Drop pretty good loot though. One of those was good. Oh, I saw another orange drop. Huh. It's not. Oh, I did. I got more pants. So, what do we got? Nope, wrong button. Um, compare. Uh, com compare? There we go. Okay, so has resistance to damage over time. But other than that, it's better in every way. Sure. Yeah, the way they uh, ended the old world was... It was certainly a thing. Ooh, look at all these guys. I smell loot over here. And it sucks. I really want a skill you get at a later level. My favorite high elf skill is basically Wall of Fire, which has uh, been one of my favorite spells ever since like D and D. Um, I think I've, I know Dad's told the story. I probably have two when I was playing Mario Three, but uh, Dad saw me 
playing Mario 3 and I had the Tanuki suit. And you jump up above something that you can't kill and you turn into a statue and you fall on them and they die. And he said, wait a second. And he told some of his friends that, that play D&D regularly. And he's like, that's a brilliant idea. So they were fighting something and he summoned a wall of iron above it. And it fell. And the DM had to figure out how to calculate damage for it. But he figured it would be substantial. <laughs> And that was when I realized walls were actually worth using. Excuse me. So we have an actual boss, finally. Oh, we have a new skill, too. It's another one we can move. Let's bust it out real quick. We'll change out Fireball for it. We have Etheric Tornado. 1,000 damage a second per 7 seconds. It's really slow. It's good for uh, choke points and what have you. This is our bad guy, Beastman Chieftain. They're they're pretty weak. None of the bosses are very impressive. He is Nungo. They don't. Have, yeah, they don't have actual gores. I don't think, except for the shamans. That's not very nice. Your twisted god cannot save you, Beastman. Now stop your bleeding, or I'll show you the true meaning of pain. Yeah. Leave the sewers. Okay. Um. You should have brought these guys out to fight me. Remember, kids, what's walking for? Poor people, that's right. Ooh, more rare gear. Very cool. Very good Z-Swords. Because fuck mazes and little walls and whatever else they feel like throwing at me. Ooh, that's nice. It's hideous, but... That Nargath Archmage Blade, Archmage Blade is pretty good, too. I could throw some more damage on it. It's got health drain. And cooldown reduction. Hell yeah, let's throw some damage on that. Uh, last blessing. Yes, please. Oh god, <laughs> that's kind of silly. I'll allow it. Oh yeah, and then don't they have like, don't they ride around on chickens? Uh, someone, I think Surreal Beliefs, was doing a halfling campaign in uh, Total Warhammer. So what's our damage look like? My son's uh, I thought it was supposed to be chickens. Hot Pot is one of the better artillery pieces, though. But I know I saw Turin. Turin was doing the unofficial units uh, for like a tournament, like doing Cathay and stuff, which is broken as shit. And I remember the halflings were fighting. Like the Fen folk or something? Oh, is he back at the embas uh, embassy? All I know is they get along pretty well, Billy. I have a prisoner for you, High Law Master. An Angor, taken from one of the camps in the sewers below. Leave him to me. I'll have the answers I seek. One we're gonna way let, or another. We're gonna let Daddy torture Return him. Return to me when you are ready. I'm ready. Actually, I guess I'm not. Let me look at my character sheet, and then I'll be ready. Ooh, living magic. Nice. Put that bad boy on. 20% chance. Very cool. Uh, oh. Ugh. He wants us to go look at our stash, where we can store items to use between characters. So, you know, if you feel like leveling up a second Archmage, which admittedly I'm doing. Shut up. Um... <laughs> <laughs> One of the best characters I ever encountered in a Warhammer novel was a, a halfling. There was a, a Sherlock Holmes character. I want to say he was Zavant. That sounds right. And he had a halfling burglar for his uh, his Watson, basically. It was pretty great. 
I'm going to pause real quick.